which is uh, faster than the world record of 1076 held by Evelyn Ashford. Fastest, is, and now she's moved down to 100, and she's one of the top. Con Gail Devers is in lane four. Lane one is open, and quickly, Lawrence Griffith Joyner blowing away the. Her name was Griffith Joyner, affectionately called Flojo, the greatest sprinter that ever lived. She set world records in 1988 for the 100 and 200 meters. During the late 80s, she became a popular figure due to both her record setting athleticism and electric personal style and charisma, both on and off the track. But with that being said, after her record shattering performances at the 1988 US Olympic trials, she became an object of scrutiny and speculation when she arrived at the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul. At least including Ben Johnson and others expressed disbelief over Griffith Joyner's dramatic improvement over a short period of time. Before that 1988 track and field season, her best time in the 100 meters was 10.96 seconds, set in 1987. In 1988, she improved that by 0.47 seconds, unheard of in track and field before that momentous occasion. She jumped from 10.96 seconds to 10.49 seconds. Her best time before 1988 in the 200 meters was 21.96 seconds, also set in 1987. In 1988, she improved that by 0.62 seconds to 21.34 seconds, another time that has not been approached as yet. Griffith Joyner attributed the change in her physique to new health program. Al Joyner replaced Bob Kersey as her coach and he changed her program to include more lower body strength training exercises such as lunges and squats. Let's stop a bit. Is this possible that doing lower body exercises could have helped Flojo to be that strong to run that fast in such a short space of time some will say yes it's possible while others will say no it's not humanly possible could it be that flojo's record in the 200 and 100 meters is legit and it could be a fault of the technology they were using that day and if that was the case we shouldn't be blaming her but the officials and the instruments after the 1988 olympics griffith joyner retired from competitive track and field just before the introduction of mandatory random drug testing in 1989 he was repeatedly tested during and out of competition according to her bio. The sum of my argument is this. There is no doubt that Flo Jo wasn't talented beyond her years. I also think that he was an exceptional talent that could have very well legitimately break the world record. But on the other side of the coin, some say it could be the use of performance enhancing drugs, specifically human growth hormone. But again, could it be that all these allegations were false and unfounded? Please answer some of these questions in the comment section. But whatever people want to believe, she will still remain the title holder and greatest sprinter ever to have graced the 100 and 200 meters and that fact is final. Flojo is still rated as the greatest the world has ever seen until a new crop of sprinters like Shelley and Fraser Price, the Elaine Thompson era, Hobbs, Abby Steiner, Sharika Jack who may very well break the world record of 1049 and 2134 in the future. It's left to see which one of these athletes need it more and will run themselves into the history books. Elaine have come nearer so far in breaking the 100 meters. Hope she can finish the job. Sherika Jackson have gone the closest to obliterating the 200 meters world record of 2134. Hope she can achieve this also before she reaches the end of her track and field years. And with that being said, I rest my case. You make the decision. And before you leave, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like down below so that we can continue the conversation. God bless.